you know, I haven't fully dismissed this flat earth theory yet just because, you know, two or three years ago, I didn't believe in creation. I was a full evolutionist. Four years ago, I completely believed in the Big Bang and, and all that mainstream science stuff. And, you know, 10 years ago, I believed in our government and terrorists. and all. You know what I'm saying? So, got to keep an open mind. Got to look at things. Got to just see what's going on. Because everything that they tell us is a lie. So, they tell us that the Earth is a globe. It's a sphere. You got to take that with a grain of salt. They've lost the benefit of the doubt. So... I assume that their default position is a lie. So if that's what they're saying. I need to figure that out, whether it's true or not. Now, I think it is. Logic would tell me that it is, but I don't know. So let's conduct an experiment, okay? Let's do some actual science that actual scientists should do, right? But they don't. They just make up models and whatever. That's not for now. So we're going to follow some storms around the Southern Ocean, right? Now, if it's flat and elongated, you know, as in the UN logo, so if this is what the Earth is supposed to look like in a flat Earth scenario, right, which is what I have gathered that it's supposed to be, right, then any storm or or low pressure system or weather system would have to move around the outer ring at a much faster rate than the inner ring, which would be the Arctic Circle. Right, so the Antarctic Circle is the outer ring. The Arctic Circle is the inner ring. So if a storm system is moving at, say, 30 miles an hour in the northern hemisphere, it would have to be moving at like 90, 120 miles an hour in the southern hemisphere to make up the same distance in the same amount of time. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to follow storms around the southern hemisphere, see how long it takes to get from Australia to South America, South America to Africa, Africa back to Australia. I'm going to produce snapshots each day at the same time and see how these things progress. Now, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I haven't done the experiment yet. The hypothesis is that it's going to be at the same speed as in the Northern Hemisphere. So let's find out. All right, so we're going to pay attention to the low pressure areas here. So we'll start south of Australia, south of Tasmania. Um, There's a little storm there. And then as we move across to west coast of South America, you can see another uh, storm there. And then south of that, by Antarctica, there's just a huge area of, you know, extreme low pressure. It's because that's what it does down there without any land to short it out. So now we're going to move over. Uh, Southwest of Africa, you can see another low pressure. And then, again, southwest of Australia, which is off the map there. Um, Now we're going to look at the actual weather model. You can see Australia is on the top, South America on the bottom. So you can see, again, there's that same low pressure south of Australia. There's the giant area of low pressure there, those two twin storms. And then... That's the one just to the west of South America. So you can see this all matches up. It's all the same time, uh, just different screens. And then you can see there's that little hitch uh, south of Africa. And then again, uh, up there, the one that was to the west, southwest of Australia, which was off the map. See, these all match up. So I took those screen captures for... Uh, zero hours Sunday, July 26th, UTC. So we can see there, that's where they are. I'm going to take another snapshot tomorrow, same time. And then each day thereafter at the same time to see how these storms progress, how they move across and impact populated areas. So there should be no debate as to how long it takes these storms to move from one area to another. And then we can figure out the speed based on how many days, how many hours it took, and the distance that it covered. So if the Earth really is flat and elongated at at the southern extent, as by the UN logo, then these things would have to be racing across the ocean to make up the same distance as a storm circling the Arctic. 
So the experiment begins. This is the first video, and then I'm going to, a week from now, uh, produce the results. Thank you.